Hey everyone, it's Stephanie and you are tuned into the review of Married at First Sight season 12, episode 11. All right guys, so before we get started, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be the first to find out when I post these videos. All right, so let's just jump into it. Um, this week's episode was about their one month anniversaries and um, they all got little baskets of stuff where they got to see their photo albums, all, all things they didn't see before. So it was like really good to have um, kind of those mementos to put them in the mood and kind of remind them how far they've come. For most, you know, one month is insignificant, um, but for them, it's a big deal, right? It's half the marriage. So they got, uh, you know, photo albums. They also got the video of their um, wedding and were able to watch it back and so on and so forth. So everybody got that. Everybody was able to celebrate in their own way. They did some pretty sweet things. You know, Vincent and Brianna did the dinner on the boat and um, Virginia and Eric did the, the plane ride. I mean, they all did some, some sweet things, um, but I just want to kind of jump in and talk about where I see the couples and uh, yeah, let's just get started. So Vincent and Brianna, I think they're still smooth sailing. I think they're still doing really well. Um, you know, Vince has some issues we've talked about before, um, but I think that those are things that he will learn if he's willing, which I think he is, he will learn how to address some of his issues that get in the way of him shutting down or getting angry or not knowing how to uh, deal with feeling insecure, things of that nature. Um, Brianna will learn to soften her edges and which we haven't seen much of even though she, they were constantly warning her how bossy, she, we've seen a little bit of it, but I thought it was gonna be like this huge deal throughout the season. It really hasn't been. Um, but with them in particular, a lot of their stuff is because they are who they are and they've never had to be different. Um, that's why I have like hope for them because they seem to be the most organic couple and their issues are simply going to evolve with marriage and I always say marriage is a mirror so sometimes it takes marriage to see an aspect of yourself um, that you need to really work on and it also takes marriage to work on that because what with our family and friends we are like take it or leave it love it or leave it whatever I don't care and they usually love it you know and because they're not going to leave you whereas a, a marriage can be something that can become destructive if, if there are certain character Characteristics and character defects that aren't worked out. So um, I still love them. I think they're great. I think they're um, moving along quite um, organically, and I'm excited to see how they how they uh, continue to develop. And I think they will stay together. Um, you know, there are rumors out here. <laughs> I get tons of messages, but um, I try not to read into those too much. But I, I do definitely think that they can stay together. So that is Vince and Brianna. Next we have um, Jacob and Haley. So <laughs> you guys know how I feel about Jacob and Haley. I think they were a poor match. Um, I just don't think that she's into him. You know, I said she's just not that into him. Um, I think Jacob is a nice guy, but um, I think, and I do think he's a nice guy, but I do think he's an acquired taste. Um, and he just needs to be matched with someone who is right for him. I don't think it's Haley. I think Haley has her own issues. Hey, she hasn't been in a relationship in like six or seven years. She's rather young to have not been in a relationship for six or seven years, which means she hasn't really had um, adult relationships. She kind of shuts down, doesn't communicate well. Um, Jacob doesn't communicate well either. So in, in contrast to Haley, it, it appears that Jacob communicates well because he's doing most of the talking Jacob kind of lets things build up um, and then he explodes um, and when he is communicating it's pretty short it, it doesn't reach much depth and he is uh, I don't know you know I always think when I look at Jacob I think about the the breakfast with his parents and how very flat they were <laughs> And um, it was a pretty boring breakfast, you know, no shade to them, nice people, but it was just, sometimes when you meet people's families, you're like, oh, that's where they get this from. And I see where he kind of gets his very 
um, muted personality. He's nice, but um, he, he, his communication, I think a lot of people are saying, oh, Jacob communicates and he's trying and he is trying, but the way that he's trying is more um, aggressive and it's not, a, it's not effective. It's not effective for somebody who's not into you. So I think that even if he were to do something differently, I don't necessarily know that it would work out in the end, but I do think that their dynamic would be better because I think just when it starts feeling good, at least from the viewer's eye, then he says something, you know, like that dinner didn't have to go awry. They could have kept it smooth. You guys are working on it. You guys haven't argued. You're celebrating the fact that you haven't argued. Um, and you know, you're celebrating the fact that you guys are like becoming friends or, or working on that and getting comfortable. And then he kind of rears up with the same kind of anger that's going on. And I get it, but also what's the goal here? Like if, if you utilize a negative emotion, then make sure that that negative emotion will get, garner you what you're looking for. So for example, if you are angry, if you're in traffic and you're really angry and you yell or you start cursing, what that does is just change your experience in traffic. It doesn't move the traffic along. If anything, it just pisses you off and makes you have a miserable experience, whereas you can be somewhere listening to music and just whatever, having a good time, same experience. Um, I mean, same situation, different experience because of the way that you choose to use it. However, if you are, if your kids are jumping on the bed, you don't want them to get hurt, and you say it once, you say it twice, you say it a third time, and then you raise your voice or you get angry, oftentimes that will uh, get their attention in a different way. So that um, change in tone and attitude usually garners you what you're looking for, reception to what you're saying, right? So that would be a time to maybe utilize that not so positive emotion um, to where it gets you what you're looking for. So even with him being frustrated and we see why he's frustrated, it's really off-putting um, because it's just like begging for her attention. You already know how she feels. I don't think they're well matched at all. I don't really think that he's attracted to her. Um, you know, initially he was, but I think when you get to know someone, that's, that is like true attraction because if they're a great person, um, then you're exponentially attracted to them more. If they're not, they could be aesthetically very pleasing and you don't see that, you know, like none of that matters. They're actually quite unattractive to you. Um, but it bothered me that Jacob kind of went on this tangent and kind of exploded again. And he has this tendency to tell her what she's feeling or tell her what she's going to do or what she's going to say. And it's coming from a very frustrated place, but it's not really called for to go to that level. And I just, when I was watching them, I was just like, okay, I don't want to see them anymore. I mean, I was not excited to view them anyways, because I just don't think they're matched well, but this is getting to be like exhausting and like uncomfortable to, to watch. Cause it's just, um, it's trying to fit like a square peg in a round hole. Like it, it, it doesn't work. So, you know, obviously my predictions for them halfway through is that, or we, we might be more than, yeah, halfway through, because they're a month in, um, is that they're not going to stay together. And I don't think they need to, because I don't think that they um, were matched. I think there was a glimmer of hope, you know, when they went to see that, I forgot the name of the person. I'm tired, y'all. But when they went to see that um, person who was reading their charts, I believe, um, and they were trying to find something, but I feel like it's, they were looking for anything, you know, a shooting star, like, oh, that must mean that there's a reason here. And I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, you guys are really looking for something. But in that moment, they seem to be on the same page about trying to find a commonality and seeing that there might be a reason. That all was shot to hell during dinner. So, you know, Jacob and Haley, I don't, I don't see um, a future with, um, but it's probably for the best. And opens, opens them up to find somebody who actually um, is a great match for them. Next, we have um, Clara and Ryan. So, Clara and Ryan, um, once again, I don't necessarily see this chemistry that they say that they have, um, and I feel like we're not we're not really getting a lot of accurate. Um, depiction of their relationship because I feel like a lot is happening behind closed doors. Um, Ryan is very regimented and he's very aware of how things look 
and what we're gonna talk about at the beginning of the season. She said, we said we're not gonna talk about our sex life. That's more Ryan, that's not Clara. Um, we're seeing some frustration. We're seeing some things that are not working and we're knowing some things that are not working, um, especially because of Dr. Viviana's um, meeting with them. But Ryan is not really sharing much here. Um, and he is in control of the situation. So at this point, I really don't know how to read them. Um, I didn't think that they were a great match. However, they keep saying that they are. <laughs> so then I'm like, well, maybe there's a lot we're not getting to see. And maybe if we did see that, then we could say, oh God, I could see why they're matched. I can't really say that. Um, when they say outside of this, they would be great friends. That was surprising for me because I don't necessarily see that they're dynamic would even be in friend groups that would be relatable but they're saying that it is um when they were watching the wedding and he leaned over and kissed her um i thought that that was sweet and that was like telling that he there is some feeling there there's some emotion for him there but you know that that emotion the true emotion and the true depth of it whatever it is if it's there is under lock and key and only Ryan has the key and he's going to decide when he opens it. Um, so I, I don't know. I feel like I'm 50-50 with them. I didn't start off thinking that they were super great together. And I didn't, um, I didn't think that they had much chemistry. Um, I still don't, don't <laughs> really. But I think that based on what they're saying, there's a possibility for more. But I would have to... I mean, we would have to really be able to see that. We're not going to get that. The most we get from Ryan is sure, sure, for sure. It's either for sure or sure. Um, that's what we're, we're going to get that 100,000 times throughout this process. And that's it. So um, I'm not for sure about what's going on with Ryan and Clara. Um, but time will tell because, you know, they're still in it. They, they seem like they still want to be be there and be in it. So, you know, we'll see. That's Ryan and Claire. I'm still, I'm half and half right now. Um, next we have Eric and Virginia. So last week we talked a lot about the differences that I think foundationally are going to shake them up, shake them apart. Um, Eric and Virginia, like I said, because I've been all over the place with them, I do think that at a different period of time, um, they could work with some seasoning and some maturity and uh, some flexibility on both sides because Eric is very rigid. Um, you guys know I like Eric, but Eric is very rigid and there's a right and a wrong and life isn't that. There is much of a gray area and it really grinds my gears when he's, he says, I know this, I've done this before, I've, I've, this is how it's supposed to go, you know? you've done it before and now you're doing it again so you didn't do it right um so there is room to learn and of course he'll say that but his actions don't always reflect there's room to learn it's always like kind of talking down to her and like i know and you don't and you need to rise up to this and yes yeah, she has her issues i've never shied away from that but i think she's more mature than he even like realizes or respects um, and I think that they're gonna struggle. I mean, they, they say that, oh, every time they're asked, it's like, oh, we're doing so great, and it's just great, great, great. But then they have some real foundational things that they don't agree on. Um, and they, you know, even with moving, just the, the way that that conversation went, where she's like, I'd rather stay on my own than move into there. And I was thinking, did his ex-wife live in that house? You know, what is the push for, like the logic that he owns it and she rents so she would stay there for a little while until they find a place together which makes sense right but then i'm saying did his ex-wife live there is there any there needs to be more dialogue about getting to the root of why she's so adamant about that it's not just about the dog and the cat and all that there's something else there but you know they don't they don't really get into that conversation because they don't want to rock the boat too much and he then he's like well whatever forget it i don't care this live where you want to live um stuff like that they 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 are they're, they have a great physical chemistry they can have fun together but the real serious issues when we're talking about politics and 
I don't know if they really went into religion, but children, um, you know, how to handle friendships in a marriage, which is an important, you know, conversation to have um, because that's all also about setting boundaries and feeling comfortable and trusting your partner. Um, they, they're like on polar opposites with that. And lust is not, you know, they say they love each other now, but love is also seeing through uh, a lot of stuff that they have not yet encountered with each other. Um, so lust is not going to carry them beyond that and kind of avoiding it is not going to carry them beyond that. So once it starts to get too hot, then they like back off and it's like, forget it. And that's just not going to work long term. So, you know, they could possibly have a fighting chance if they actually had a therapist that really weekly bi-monthly worked with them to process these things and like unweave this web so that they can really see what it is and see if it's going to work or not um but you know they they continue to enjoy each other nonetheless and i do think that they have a good a good chemistry for what it is but i don't think that that chemistry is going to sustain something forever there has to be more so that's eric and virginia Last but not least, we have Chris and Paige. Um, Chris is a master manipulator. Like he's masterful in his BS, he really is. Um, the conversation that they were having when he went, when he went to her house, or I don't know where they were, um, that basically said that he is not into her and he's not emotionally connected and all of this stuff. That conversation started with her wanting more communication and he turned it around to, I mean, he did it so seamlessly. I mean, I almost applauded his crazy because I'm like, wow, this is how you get away with this stuff. And, you know, if you're in a position to be manipulated, you know, or, or you um, have low self-esteem or struggling with something that would allow you to continue to not see what's so very obvious, then he will get over on you because her demand, not demand, but her desire for more communication, um, consistent is what she asked for turned into him saying that he called her a bunch of times and she didn't pick up and you know she doesn't want to be off camera and she didn't call him back and you know her saying hey why didn't you text me i'm not really a text guy it is all about chris it is chris's world i don't want to do this i'm not doing this i don't feel this way i i i i i you didn't ask me this hey i don't know this you didn't talk well you didn't ask me this there's no accountability no um no awareness that he does anything wrong he can switch it around for those who are oblivious and make it about himself and that's when he kind of dropped the bomb with her saying that he's not all of these things that he was saying and mind you in that same scene at the beginning he was saying i am attracted to her and i'm getting to i'm liking to spend this time with her and then everything turned upside down because he is double-minded and that breeds chaos um and he's unhinged you know i've seen some of his posts on social media he likes the drama because he's coming after people he's unhinged he's not someone to be taken seriously at all um and he i just feel bad that she was in this experiment but also Paige, like girl get it together like several episodes ago this doesn't serve me. And you're sitting here taking crumbs. I mean, you're in a desert taking drops of water from this clown and that you have to be accountable. You have to be held accountable for that because there was an awareness weeks ago from, you know, based on how we're viewing it, there was an awareness weeks ago and you're ignoring that. I mean, there are red flags, every red sea and you're ignoring that um, and kind of swallowing all of this dirty water, just hoping that it'll quench your thirst and it's not it's it's even worse so the fact that he was able to take even more of her time was just it was frustrating for me to watch because I was like why is she doing this and even having that moment of um you know am I in love with the idea of being or being married instead of like this person you're not in love with Chris um that's one um but two you realize that weeks ago you already realize that this doesn't serve you when you sat there with the mother of his child before that when he said he bought her a mercedes i mean there's been on the honeymoon there's been so many things the day after they got married 
and he went down to breakfast and he never came back with breakfast i mean there's been so many things so it's like at some point you have to be accountable um and i i feel like she's known for a while but like i said it was kind of like i'm married legally and i think in her mind divorce was worse so um let's hide under the umbrella of god and say oh and and just stick it out because maybe this will turn around and um be something that sticks so i don't have to get a divorce but spiritually um even if she was there for the right reason, she's got to know that like everything is not of God. Like there's nothing about Chris that says that he's of God. And you have to witness that and you have to recognize that and you can't continue to act in a certain manner and then think that God is going to make it okay or why did God let this happen or this is still of God. It's not, it's not. Cause if it was, it would not be going this way. Um, so, um, I don't know, I don't watch the previews. I've said that to you guys many times. I don't watch the previews because it'll distract me from like what I watched this week. I hope I don't see them again until decision day. I think we've drugged them out long enough. Um, so yeah, that's it for this week. As always, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you for all the congratulations on the house. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share. And I will talk to you guys next week. Everyone have a great weekend.